you got a wife, you, you, you got a baby. You're taking odd jobs to pay your freaking bills while you're following a dream. And the dream appeared because you kept your head on a freaking swivel. You went and found a tech company that could help you monetize, bring you a platform to do something you love and showcase MMA fighters. All right, this is what an entrepreneur freaking does. <laughs> All right, if you're tuning in on YouTube, this is the uh, Homie G. This is the Homie G episode of uh, 2000 Percent Rays. Uh, I am just kidding. I, I am wearing sunglasses and my diamond 2000 percent raise gold chain and pendant and i i gotta tell you that the, the the chain and the pendant is not out of the ordinary but me wearing sunglasses on an episode it, it is quite out of the ordinary and i'm gonna tell you what here's why i'm doing it all right i got motherfucking pink eye and i've been sick as a motherfucking dog the last few days and my guest today we had to reschedule once earlier, and I'm like, dude, I need to get this guy on the show. Even though I didn't do the normal homework I would have done, he has been around the block in the podcast circuit, and uh, he has a pretty good story to tell. So before I bring him on, though, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell my damn story, okay? How the, how the hell does, does a person my age get, get pink eye? And I'll tell you how it happens. It happens from letting uh la uh celebrity types use your freaking condo when you're not there and uh, <laughs> and um you know they they film podcasts and i sleep on that couch sometimes when i'm watching tv and apparently i roll over on my eye and you know things fucking happen but that's beside the point I, i'm not sure exactly how i got it but it could have very well been for that reason i will say this all right if you don't have your health you don't have anything. And, and you might be listening to this right now thinking to yourself, John, that's a little dramatic, buddy. You, you just had fucking pink eye. Relax. Well, for about seven hours yesterday, all right, this is probably going to be a, a few weeks ago at this point by the time we air this, but for seven hours yesterday, this motherfucker thought I was losing vision permanently in, in my right eye. Um, I had gone to the immediate care to treat the pink eye, and it was getting progressively worse, getting progressively worse. I went to an optometrist. The optometrist uh, was treating it and had me come in the next day. Well, in the meantime, I had something else going on where I took a heavy dose of antibiotics for something else the day before. Well, one of the side effects of the antibiotics was nausea and, and, and sickness. And I didn't realize this and I didn't put two and two together. Well, I'm at the optometrist the next day and she's looking at my pink eye and I start breaking out in cold sweats <laughs> and she gets like scared for me and wanted to call an ambulance. And I'm like, uh, no, I think I'm fine. But it was like heavy, heavy flu-like symptoms. And it was just a, it was just a reaction of, of a side effect to the antibiotic I took. Anyway, um, she goes, well, if you're not going to let me call an ambulance, you got to go to your primary care doctor or go to the emergency room like now. So, so I did just that. And uh, my, my primary care looked at the eye a little bit differently than, than the optometrist did. And he thought he saw an ulcer and he goes, I don't know how your optometrist missed this. You got, you got a fucking ulcer on your cornea. You need to like get into an ophthalmologist like ASAP. You're, you're going to lose your vision. I well, wasn't able to get an ophthalmologist appointment until six hours later that day. So for six hours, I'm fucking sitting there thinking like I am losing vision in my eye. And, and by the way, I know this sounds dramatic, but I've had this thing for like a week now and it wasn't getting freaking better. And uh, I'm pissed off at my optometrist. How does she not see this? But well, the general, you know, the the the, the uh, general practitioner does. And um, anyway, got to the ophthalmologist. He said, "Oh, I can see why a general practitioner would think this. You don't have a, 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 a uh, an ulcer. Relax, buddy. Relax." And he, he kind of made the reference. You know, uh, in ophthalmology world, we we make the joke that your eye is directly connected to to your adre adrenal gland. And like, think about it like this. Oh, if you hurt your elbow, okay, I'll take care of it Monday. Uh, you hurt your fucking eye, get me in now. You fucking freak the fuck out. And uh, I, I did just that. It literally thought I was losing my vision. And it was a real panic. It was a real panic. 
And, um, you know, just got me thinking, and I've, I've hemorrhaging conjunctivitis, okay? So they said it's a really, really bad case. I'm not just making this shit up. You go, it ain't good, but you're not going to die, and it's a virus, and it's going to live in there, and you got to just ride this bitch out. They put a protective bandage contact lens in my, in my eye. First time I felt comfortable in, like, days, and so that was huge because basically I have a scab on my cornea that's waiting to heal. So it's just like walking around all day feeling like you got an eyelash in your freaking eye, and for three days, I'm trying to pick an eyelash out that doesn't exist, like a fucking crackhead. It's like picking. Anyway, here we are with a great guest today. Yeah. If you're watching on YouTube, you're gonna you're gonna get a glimpse a glimpse of the eye. This is this is on the mend, by the way. This is kind of come up right now. It was yeah. ten times worse the last few days. I looked like I was just in a boxing match, or maybe maybe an MMA fight where I got hit in the fucking eye, as Randy Couture once said on the show. Uh, you got to make friends with getting punched in the face and uh, <laughs> fuck pink eye. I, I don't want, I do not want to make friends with that. Madison Clavon, uh, he's the CEO of Fight Stars Network, which is, which is a platform that provides fighters, promotion companies, and talent in the business of combat sports, a way to monetize themselves through a marketplace he's created. His journey has not been easy. He started in the game training a few fighters and, and some famous influencers. And isn't that freaking funny, man? Well, that's one thing we're going to freaking talk about. Why, why do influencers now think that they're like fighters? I, I, I fuck around with Billy McFarlane from Fire Festival. Yeah, he fucking yeah. Tells me he's, he tells me he's trained in Muay Thai. Well, Billy, what the fuck do you have to do with Muay Thai? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> uh, Madison, Madison's uncle was a boxer and a karate master. He got into fighting to work on some mental issues and he had depression. We've talked about we've talked about mental health on this show before, Madison. And uh, he, he loves it. He loves it. He was trained as an influencer fighter at a gym and it kind of opened up their doors to him. And he started Fight Stars to, um, as a way to begin creating content and, and acquiring other shows to, to build this network network. He moved everything to Vegas and opened up a media center gym, which I think is a story in itself, my friend. Yeah. So why don't we start there, man? Madison Clavin, welcome to 2000% Raise. Thank you for having me on. I'm a big fan of you. Um, I love, I like, I was, we were talking prior to uh, recording. You keep it real, man. And that, I think a lot of people need to hear that. And you were like, well, I'm losing followers. It's like, so what? Those guys, they just can't handle the truth. And that's what it is. Yeah. You know, wh what your story has come from, where what you, what you talk about is I'm like in a similar position of, trying to, you know, secure my own destiny and, and be in control. I came from television and movies and kind of hit a plateau in, in my career and was working for all the other people. And, and really like, I was happy with it because I had stability, but I just knew I could do more and combat sports is something I love. And I really appreciate what these fighters, these people go through on a day-to-day -day basis to give their pretty much their bodies and their lives for entertainment. And that's been where I'm, I'm at right now with Fight Stars and what I'm trying to do and help these fighters really monetize their platforms through the technology I provide. Love it. Love it. And, and were you doing acting in Hollywood? Man, I was doing uh, craft service and, and grip work and like labor. I was doing a lot of labor work, behind the scenes stuff, you know. Oh, I see. There is a huge Hollywood strike right now because of the writers and and they feel like they're not being paid enough and you know with streams. But there's a, the the people the true people that are really making Hollywood happen are the grips and the medics and the craft service guys and the lighting guys and and okay. everybody that's getting up early in the first on set to really build and 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 get get the sets up ready so that the producers and the actors and the directors can come in. You know the camera guys, all those people that that are really putting in the work um that was kind of where i was um and involved in and, and are, the, are those people being impacted by the strike as well everybody, too right now yeah everybody is and that's what's unfortunate about it is i understand where the writers are coming from as far as they feel like with the streams and they're not getting paid properly but yep. there are so many more people that are hurting right now that don't need to go through this strike mm. and uh it's it's just it's just sad what's going on and we have to continue to keep having these strikes you know i'm still in the union myself local lady um but all my brother brothers and sisters they're they're not working right now you know they're mm -hmm. on they're on uh either disability or they're on uh unemployment just waiting for this these writers and um the big wigs at these big studios to finally come to a deal so we they can wow. go back and start producing content 
Yeah. Yeah. And, and local 80 is what, what uh, union is that? That's uh grips. It's uh medics and it's craft service. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then it, is it fair to say these are people that maybe out of it, it relative to Hollywood, these are maybe the people that need that money the most. Uh, yes. Yes. It's the grips. It's the medics. It's craft service. It's the lighting. Um, it's the camera guys. It's everybody that is behind the scenes that, that is, so crucial to to producing a show these are people we work 16 17 hours a day first yep. in last out and uh you know they're just mm. waiting for this to all you know come to a, a some type of deal so they can all get back to work because they all have families to provide for you know and we've talked about this on the show but but really just briefly and i, I would love to hear your person this isn't why i brought you on the show obviously but but really just at least briefly hear your 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 take on this I, the, the 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 challenge from what I understand, is that Netflix, the net or the Netflixes of the world, ha have no way to really monetize how much more you should get paid because your show is popular. Because Netflix doesn't make any more money that's popular, but but then I guess you could argue the other side of it. Well, yeah, it does because more people subscribe to Netflix in the future because of the popularity of that show you are on. Okay, where 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 where's the answer lie? It is quite the conundrum, isn't it? It is, but it's it's like this. It's like if you're coming in with the show, yeah, the production company is going to foot the bill. Mm -hmm. Um somewhere in that contract, if if it becomes a hit show, you negotiate somewhere where if it does, you know, become this like number one hit show, then yeah, you should get maybe a bonus in in your pay or or some type of revenue split or 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 some mm -hmm. something in there, but most yep. of the time, some of these shows aren't as big or as popular. And so these production companies are footing the bill. And that's kind of where the problem mm -hmm. is. It's like, it, it's basically like, if, if it's a good show, you should get paid. But if it's a bad show, you can't be mad about it because you just had this production company pay for it. So that's kind of why there's this issue between the writers and and this strike going on and, and how it is. Because, you know, they're footing the bill for it like a Netflix. Um, but yeah. So gotcha. that's that's where that's where it's yeah. at right now with the whole thing. But yeah, there should be like some type of negotiation where if it just become a hit show and you know more mm -hmm. people are buying into Netflix or Paramount or whatever it is because of that show, yeah. then you should get, you know, you should get paid a little more. Well, a couple of my Hollywood friends said another one of the underlying points also involved is is artificial intelligence and and how that's going to play in a role in the in the writing of TV shows and I got to say, on that sticking point, uh, every human being that's do doing anything creative, you, you better you better be pivoting and, and reacting. Because even, even if you win that battle in the short term, uh, go, go look at Metallica and Napster, okay? <laughs> you, you, you better end up adapting to whatever the future holds there. Yeah, the AI thing is a tricky thing too, but still, even the AI is pulling from somebody's content. They're, mm -hmm. they're not just creating the idea itself. Right. They're finding other you know scripts or whatever it is that they're looking for from other people so it's not necessarily they're generating you know new work chad gbt may make a movie about a podcast host with a gold chain that uh, becomes a billionaire in los angeles right exactly they're gonna look at you right away you yeah. know and yeah. have the <laughs> well that's what i'm saying it's like still and that's the other issue is like man they can't be in strike right now because you're allowing more time for the ai to develop itself better now and and who knows now when they come out back out ai might be more developed and be able to create you know better content without actually having a person so yeah like, totally, like human is always going to make a better a better story or a plot line than than a computer one of my early episodes, I think it was probably episode 17 or 18, Tommy Calazia was on this show. He has a company called Life Brand. I'm on his advisory board and an early investor. And it's an AI for social media where it identifies things and pictures that you've posted on social media. Hey, by the way, in the background, there is a Confederate flag. Hey, by the way, that girl, that's not a banana in her mouth in the background in that car. You know what I mean? Like it'll, yeah. it'll catch it and flag it. And uh, w one of the big things that we talk about is like over time, it just gets better and better. So whoever has that head start in, in building that database, as long as you don't fuck up, you know what I mean? You're, yeah, you're 100%. hard to catch. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Hey, everybody, I want to invite you to check out 2000percentraise.com. Here you could buy the 2000% Raise book, also available on Amazon. You could check out 2000% Raise merchandise. 
as well as 2,000% raise special events that might be coming to your city soon. Last but not least, you can enroll in the 2,000% raise curriculum, which will help you on your entrepreneurial journey. Don't forget to follow at John Sarasani on Instagram and TikTok as well. Thank you for being a supporter of the show. Well, let's talk about it, man. So, so, so that's your background. You, uh, you, you, you've got this fighters network platform. You're active on social media. That's how you and I, you and I met. Yeah. Why don't you yeah. tell us a little, little bit about this? First, first of all, you, you described your dad as a karate master. Now, listen, sometimes every once in a while, I, I tell people I'm a karate master to just scare the shit out of them where there's wow. no truth to it. There's no truth to it. Like, like, what, what, what warrants the title karate master? Yeah. So my, it was my, it was my uncle, but my uncle, okay. um, yeah, he was a karate master, black belt. Um, grew up in DC. He was really close friends with my dad. And, um, basically when he had moved out from the East coast to the West coast, my dad, um, let him stay and kind of get his foot footing in uh, LA and kind of develop. So my uncle, he's a extremely badass. He's just turned 70 on uh, last Sunday. Um, okay. still looks, still can move like a 45 year old at 70 nice. years old, but wow. he was a probation officer, um, in LA with the gang unit. Uh, worked at the Crips and the Bloods. He was also an actor. He was a boxer. Uh, he was a stuntman in a lot of big movies. Um, and then he was a karate master and really developed that discipline um, that comes with fighting. Okay. And growing up, he kind of got me into it. And then I just really took a loving to boxing. Mm. Never got into an actual, um, like a real match, but I always trained like consistently daily. And he got me into it. I started learning everything about it just the the road work that these fighters go in getting up early running my miles doing my training and develop this discipline that kind of helped me get out of this this like immature mindset that i always had and kind of made me you know from a boy to a man and um i started going to his classes and helping him train kids and we were doing these amazing programs with these kids on saturday even um i would get dressed up in full um uniform with like pads and and gear mm. and we have these little girls in our classes and i would pretend like i was abducting them and the moms would be around uh watching and we'd try to teach these little girls how to protect themselves mm. and we would see these moms just screaming like you better get away like cussing and screaming and like telling their little girls to like fight me off and like really developing like this this amazing like ecosystem where we were teaching kids like the power of like protecting yourself obviously in a respectful way but just knowing that boxing and, and combat sports in general can really like protect yourself and and you kind of understand and really learn your body and and you know a person who can fight really isn't going to go and pick a fight it's usually the person that can't fight that tries to act the toughest and so that's yep. kind of what we were developing with the kids and then i started training a few fighters and some influencers and we'll get into yeah. that too and yeah. um, one of them was looking for a home base and I got connected with a gym in Van Nuys and they basically said, hey, if, we, if that influencer will shout us out, I'll give you a key and you could train privately at our gym whenever you want. We just want nice. Yep. Yeah. So they gave us the key. We did the exposure. We went and fought. He got this really big win in Miami. And I just went to go thank the owner, like, thank you for, you know, letting me use your gym. And he's like, what do you do? And I explained my background. I was in news, um, worked for Fox News. And then I got into media and working in Netflix and Amazon mm -hmm. and all that. And um, he's like, why don't you come work with me? I want to start a media company. Um, the reason being is because he would have all these big fighters come to his gym and all these media companies would get millions and millions of views uh with content that was created in his gym and he's like okay that should be me that should be me gotcha. so he asked for my help and he offered me a job that's how i kind of got into the boxing world with the content side and then we started developing um fight stars network or what was called previously fight stars tv and um we sponsored the canelo alvarez caleb plant fight we had a nice. fight house down in san diego where we had david benavita stay there and train right. with a few other fighters. We essentially put a ring in the house and these guys all lived there and we created content and they trained for four months there at the house. Yep. Um, and then he also decided we should move to Vegas because that's the Mecca of combat sports with boxing and MMA. All the big fights are in Vegas and started developing 
Um, we started acquiring podcasts, the number one boxing podcast called The Boxing Voice, and a few others with Pauli Malinaji. And so we have this ecosystem and this really cool network of all these big channels coming in. Mm-hmm. And we're all working together to develop this network. And right. I started getting sponsorships, uh, working with Venom. Uh, they provided us with gym equipment. And we had this amazing media center gym where fighters would come in and take pictures. Um, they would do content on our podcasts. We had awesome. a, Yeah, we had a full gym with um, workout equipment, a boxing ring. Uh, yeah. Really, it was like a one-stop shop, you know, so you could come in and do everything and then you're done for the day. Here's what I love about, about that story. It, it kind of took us to, to the whole the whole spectrum, right? Yeah, you're, yeah, you're yeah. walking, okay, how, how your uncle influenced you, how you had your jobs in Hollywood, how how it just kind of all came together, how you started training homeboy. Okay, wait a minute, you're getting it free at the gym if you posted some content about it. Guys, this is how entrepreneurs work. One of, one of the things we talk about on my page a lot is that I, I talk about, hey, you better have a sales background if you're going to go start your own business. But it's not always the fucking case, all right? Um, Madison was not from a sales background, but he was keeping his head on a fucking swivel and now sees an opportunity. Hey, we could do this ourselves. You know, it's so easy for, for the rainmakers that well, it's, so, it's hard for the rainmakers too, because those that are great from a business to business sales standpoint are usually getting paid handsomely as well. So it, it's hard for them to walk away from that job because of those golden handcuffs. But it's easy for them to make that transition, in my opinion, if they do it, if they have, you know, you know, the skill sets um, for, for people that are not used to rain making, which I mean, bringing in revenue. Um, gosh, you, you know, you're going to go walk into this fucking shit. How the fuck are you going to make any fucking money? Um, you know, so that that's that's pretty damn cruel how, how you just walked us through that, my friend. Now, now, is this something that. I assume you you either you're probably not making much money now from it. I, you might be, but are you raising money? How, how are you keeping your lights on right now? Yeah. So 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 after all of this has happened and we developed the network, in uh, past August, my mentor, the person that brought me on, the owner of the gym and everything we were doing, he took his life. What? And, oh my yeah, god! He took his life, and um. He was just a workaholic. He had a few Ooh. other businesses. He made he was he had all the money in the world, man. He had all the money in the world. He was such a good guy, Ooh. very giving, um, but just was a workaholic. And I think just had a bad night and just mm. he took his life. And um, yeah. so August happened, and that all happened. And kind of everybody while the boat was burning kind of jumped ship except me. And mm. his wife gave me the business, and I had to essentially rebrand everything and and start all over from scratch. I didn't want to give up on the dream because I feel really everything I've ever done in my life from corporate to all the way to, to movies and just everything mm-hmm. I've done. I felt so passionate about this. Like I love this sport and I, I love comic sports and I just love being here. So I'm really sorry about your friend. And I mean, sorry, even sorry to hear it now that he had, he had a wife that he left behind as well. That, that's, that's sad. How, how old was he? Uh, he just, he turned 50, um, a month prior. So, wow the wife let you take over the business what what did that entail just a gym and gym and equipment yeah well so pretty much just everything from the rights to all the equipment and everything i have was all mine so okay. i have it i have it in storage currently right now and i just rebranded so i had to take odd jobs these last eight months while i was rebranding everything i even was re- going back to la to like do to work in the movie industry just to make some money to provide for my wife and my baby. Uh, and I'm rebranding wow. and figuring everything out. Everybody that I've worked with, I could, I could proudly say that in this business, boxing and, 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 and combat sports, there's a lot of like sh- sh- shady people and they're okay. always trying to take advantage of these fighters. And I probably say that I've never done anything funky. So all the people that I've worked with were like, Hey man, what's going on? When are you getting back? Like, what are you going to do? Like, we're ready to work with you. And um, this tech company called View It, we've had met a few times and they were, they help monetize celebrities um, through this technology they provide. Mm-hmm. And they really wanted to get in the combat sports. And that's kind of how we teamed up. So oh. last three months has been a rebuild. I'm actually in a beautiful studio now uh, in my office here in, in Nevada, uh, Vegas. And, um, we're getting ready to launch 
um, the the rebrand of the network. Um, I have a bunch of fighters on my uh, my network already. Nice. A lot of the podcasts are are back on. Um, we're going to be live streaming fights for smaller promotion companies to help them monetize. And really, it's just been a struggle, but it's been like the best struggle I've ever had because I've learned a lot about myself and I haven't given up on the dream because for everybody I've spoken with about it and what I have and the, the technology I have and everything I have, not one person has given me a negative critique about it. They've obviously given me constructive criticism but they all see that I have something very powerful and what I can do for these fighters and for everybody in the game right now. So we're getting ready to launch August 5th. Awesome. Congratulations, man. Yeah, we're in the, we're in the, to that question, we're in the seed round right now. You're so in we're the seed round right now. It. Yeah. Well, let, let me let me highlight something you you just said there, Madison. You said, okay, you got you got a wife. You, you, you got a baby. You're taking odd jobs to pay your freaking bills while you're following a dream. And the dream appeared because you kept your head on a freaking swivel. You went and found a tech company that could help you monetize, bring you a platform to do something you love and showcase MMA fighters. All right, this is what an entrepreneur freaking does. A non-entrepreneur makes all the excuses in the world. Oh, I got a wife, I got a baby. You know what, Let, let's, let's, Let's move back to LA and do some grip work. Let, let, let's, you know what? I, I think I could probably go back. I could try to be a stunt man or something. No, fuck that. We're staying right here. I'm doing odd jobs. We're going to make this work until it doesn't. That's how an entrepreneur mind works. Yeah, correct. And fortunately, my wife believes in my vision too, because she sees it. And I just, I've, I've done so many things in my life. Like this is the one thing I truly believe, like I know is going to work out. And I've, I, from all the feedback, I, like I said, like, I haven't had one negative thing come back um, about it and what, what I can do and what I'm going to do. So awesome. Um, yeah, man. Yeah. And that's like one of the reasons like why I follow you is because the stuff that mm. you promote and you push and you talk about is like, I'm in that position right now, you know, like, right, right. and I need that like tough love per se. And I need to really, I, I, I don't want to hear, I don't want to be babied or, mm. or caressed. Like I want to hear the real, because I know other people, this is literally the story of what other people say. Like they had to go through the shit to get to the top. And it's like, I'm in that same position. And it's like, do I quit yeah. or do I see it through? And like, that's, you know, that's why I became such a fan of you is because it's like, that's where I'm at right now, you know? And I just don't want to give up on it. Cause I know, I know I, I could see it. I see the light at the end of right the Right on there. Well, thanks brother. You know, here's the other thing about what you just said there too. It, it, it comes in different forms, the, the, the coddling and, and caressing and, and, you know, uh, it's like, I'll, I'll use the example of, of people that work in sales in, in corporate America. Like, it's very seldom somebody comes to you and says, hey, dude, you probably shouldn't be in sales. You fucking suck at this job. Now, nah, the, they let you kind of hang around and be a low performer. If you're at a good sales organization, all right, if you're at one of those ones that need a college degree and it's business to business, guess what? You, you, you get to fucking skate for you probably fool around in that industry for almost 10 fucking years before before you're outed because everyone's fucking too nice everyone's too nice and that next company in the same industry fuck they'll take a chance on you because they don't have to retrain you on the industry you already know some shit okay well you do that a few times eventually someone's got to say hey dude you fucking suck at your job bro <laughs> you know what i mean yeah and and, and 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 madison you're 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 saying the exact same thing but 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 much bigger than that you're saying okay just life we're talking about fucking life right now man and you know madison i i you're uh you talked a little bit about your upbringing and i, I don't think we have that many similarities but we probably do from the sense that neither of us came from a wealthy background not neither none of us you know i, I didn't come from some well-connected family I just saw an opportunity and jumped on it to try to, you know, become an entrepreneur. And it, it worked, I, you know, initially what I was doing, Madison, wasn't wasn't even as um, as aggressive as what you're thinking. What, what you're talking about doing is is uh, its own fucking company and its own thing. It's a tech platform. I mean, this this could really fucking blow up as MMA continues to get more and more popular. You know what yeah. I mean? I, I was just trying to make a few hundred grand a year and it hockey sticked up from there. And I, you know, thank, thank, thank everybody for that one. But, but what you got, man, you, this, this might be a billion dollar, dollar idea, man. That's what I've been saying. Um, you know, I, I don't want to over promise and say all these things, but 
that's the vision, man. And and like what we can do for these fighters, boxers, wrestlers, MMA, um, any niche sports, you know, um, that come into the platform. I'm able to provide this 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 technology that they can now get sponsors and and you know sell course classes and we have a drop shipping company that can you know do their merch for them and and uh, it's on their own domain and and you know they can have subscriptions and exclusive content and they're not tied to any third party platform they keep their own data and analytics it's on oh, the web so it's, all, so so it's all okay so let's talk about that okay yeah. so, so so you're back end so they they're white labeling you or or they're not even white labeling it's it's their own shit Yes. And you're the, you're, you're the back end of it. Correct. Correct. And, um, it's all on the web three, so we can accept crypto and, and everything. We're all, we're, we're one step ahead, two steps ahead of every other platform that can possibly offer this. But instead of, yes, they're part of fight stars, but they're also their own domain name. So you take a fighter, for example, like, um, like a Mike Fernando Morgan. Uh, yeah. Use Mike Chandler as an example because he's coming on the show soon. Yeah, so like you take a Mike Chandler and, and instead of him being attached to like a third party, you know, like an Instagram or an OnlyFans, it's MikeChandler.com. But on the MikeChandler.com, he has this technology that we can provide where he can truly monetize himself in a way that no one else can. And then also um, we provide um, our own camera crew and team to go out and, and make this quality content that, you know, these other platforms don't do. Um, and then once I op reopen my media center gym, anybody that's a part of the fight stars network is now allowed to go in there and use it, uh, free of charge because you're, um, a part of the network. And then the bigger picture is that open up a few more, um, and these bigger, uh, you know, bigger cities like LA, Miami, Dallas, and New York. So if you're in that area and, or you're going to a big fight, you now have access to this gym where you can do them. You mm -hmm. can go train, but you can also create the content too. And, uh, that's hey, can, I, can I just, can I just mention something? It, it noticeably you left out Chicago there. I'm going to tell you what, all, everybody listen, all that my LA and New York people, don't even, don't even correct yourself, Madison, all of I my LA and New York Chicago. people, they don't even, they, Chicago might as well be fucking St. Louis no, or Kansas no. city. No, no, they no. don't give a fuck about us. I'm shout telling you. Boy, Rick, shout out to my boy, Rick Ramos. He's got a great gym out there in Chicago. Um, <laughs> Chicago, <laughs> Chicago, after those first five cities, we, we would love to go in Chicago. And <laughs> after Dallas. After Fort Lauderdale. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a Cincinnati, Ohio over Chicago, man. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, no, no. Oh. Chicago, Chicago is a great fight city too. But um yeah. you know, there's we a, wanted there's to a couple cool so golden gloves uh boxing is very big in Chicago. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's here. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have I have a, a great connections in Chicago. Like I said, my boy Rick Ramos, he's a big, big trainer out there. He's got his wife is Jessica McCaskill, who's uh, one of the women's champions, and and uh, they have a great gym out there in Chicago. Great people. So is that right? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. We, we can't just gloss over the fact that you said Mike Chandler has an OnlyFans page. It's kind of fucking weird. No, no, I, no, it, or, saying if it, for example, if he did have an OnlyFans, because the, these these other platforms that offer like a subscription, you know, the issue with OnlyFans is it's ninety eight percent adult content and right. very very little you know, non-adult content and they're attached right. to the name. And it's been an issue for a lot of people, especially trying to acquire uh, for fighters, trying to acquire sponsors because some of these bigger companies don't want to be attached to that, that stigma. Yeah. And, and, uh, and that stigma's not going anywhere. I've been approached by a couple of different people to do it only fans with my business content. And if you look at the platform as it is, it is a very easy platform to 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 do it, other than uh, the, versus other ways to go about it. It's there, but but there's that st there's the stigma to it. You don't want anything to do with it, you know. Yeah, and you're attached to the name, whereas, you know, now I'm, I'm providing you your own domain name. You you have this technology. We have a, a lot more to offer. We can do live streaming and um, some high quality production as well. So we offer more. But now you're attached to your own name and your own brand, and that's really what it is. Especially for these smaller fighters, we're going to help build your brand up so that you can make money outside of the ring. Because a lot of these guys, they just know how to fight, but they don't necessarily know how to speak correctly or how to really post themselves on, on, on social media. And so I can come in and kind of teach you and guide you and give you this, 
this kind of like this, you know, this platform for you to really grow and and build yourself. So you're not necessarily worrying about a fight check, but you can do a lot more with yourself because there is mm-hmm. life after boxing and there is life yeah. after combat sports. And and most of these guys just don't know it. You know, these guys are fighting till they're 40, 41 years old, end up having some serious health issues and nothing to show for it. You know, these guys don't have insurance. They don't have yeah. anything anything to protect themselves. So if they can build their business and their brand while they're fighting and growing, they're going to protect themselves and their family, you know, for the future. And that's so important. And and the intangible, um, the intangible benefit of what you just described there might be greater than the things I could touch and feel like the platform itself. And, and the reason I say that is because experience freaking matters. Okay. So if you're fighter ABC over here and, and I get to work with Madison on a regular basis and we talk once a month or once a week, whatever the fuck it is. And he's talking to 40 other fighters that same week he, about various different things. Okay. Something's going to come up in my conversation that he heard about someone else going through. Hey, here's how, here's how Larry handled it. Here's how George handled it. Hey, you know what? Uh, Betty's a female fighter down in freaking Texas. She dealt with this exact same issue. And, you know, that, not that there's not other, um, you know, avenues for people to communicate, but, but when you are part of something formal like this and, and it has a name like the network itself, um, I, I feel, I feel like there's an invaluable benefit to that in, in my experience in other industries, for sure. Yeah, I agree with you hundred mm-hmm. percent. You know, yeah. it's, this is just such a passion of mine and, mm-hmm. you know, I'm going to, I'm going to see it through and I've had some great. Uh, meetings with some 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 investors that want to come in and some other people that want to be advisors and and uh they 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 clearly see the vision and uh yeah. they they will help will all want to help so like i said i'm in um the seed round right now we're raising um some capital to get some 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 of my team back from my videographers and some editors and and then we're going to go after getting this media center gym open up and then once i get that open the ecosystem is back and and uh, next week, we're hoping to launch some of the fighter channels um, for some of the fighters that are already on the network so we can start monetizing right away. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's awesome, brother. I, I appreciate you coming on, Madison. And I, I got to tell you, man, this is this is one of those episodes I thoroughly enjoy because you're seeing somebody on, on, on the come up. Maybe we have Madison back in five years, five or 10 years from now. And uh He's talking about how he uh, filled Dana White's shoes when he retired or something. Who fucking knows? Uh, hey, let's go slow. You know, I, you know, <laughs> exit would be great if some big company would want to acquire it or we become the acquirers, you know? So exactly, um, exactly. And, or, yeah. And for you, brother, man, just keep, keep doing what you're doing. Like the, the truth is what people need to see, especially in business. These influencers, they go out there and they just only talk about the success and the, and mm-hmm. and the good stuff and they show the money and the cars and this but dude the journey is where it's at and that's literally what people need to see they need to understand the struggle because the struggle is what's going to make you so well, love it, brother. Doing, brother. thank you well listen we end the show like this every time my, my friend madison clavon recommends what movie to the 2000 percent raise audience what movie Any movie of my choice? Anything you want. It doesn't have to be about fighting or business. Anything you want. Troy. Troy. I would, that's like one of my favorite movies of all time. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be about fighting, but it could be about fighting. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know. But like, I was just going to say, like, it's it's Troy. That's like my, yeah. my go-to movie anytime, man. So. Dude, I love uh, fucking Troy. Yeah, it's my the, favorite uh, movie. So Gladiator. It makes me think of Gladiator when you say Troy. I know it's not the same fucking movie. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Both, but both, yeah, both, both, both movies are outstanding. Thank you, my friend. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate the opportunity. And that wraps up another episode of 2000% Raise. Thank you for listening. The best way to support our show is by leaving a rating or review on all platforms you listened on. And of course, by following, liking, or subscribing. Visit us at 2000%Raise.com or at John Sarasani on TikTok and Instagram. And of course, my YouTube channel at John Sarasani's 2000% Raise. Find all the ways to follow today's guests in our show notes. Thank you for being a part of our entrepreneurial journey.